I'm a Dr. Raul Esperante. I'm a paleontologist, and I do research in fossil whales and also ichnofossils and um, dinosaur footprints and other things that I'm interested in. And also I'm interested in the relation between faith and science. For me, the Bible is a reliable book. It's the Word of God. And um, I find it uh, trustable. I have experienced that in my own life. First of all, the Bible has proved, proven to be reliable in history, historically, and we can test it. And um, the, the history as recorded in the Bible, can be verified um, by archaeology and historical records, not only from uh, the, the Hebrew people, but also from historical records of other people um, living in, at that time around. Also prophecies, prophecies written and compiled in the Bible have, have been shown to be reliable and, and, be, and fulfilled prophecies about Jesus, about different kingdoms, different people in the past, and also prophecies about the present. For example, the book of Daniel um, records uh, prophecies about the successive kingdoms on earth. And that years before those kingdoms um, occurred. And those kingdoms then happened, one after the other. So historically and prophetically, the Bible has shown to be reliable. Um, but I think most importantly is my own experience with Scripture. In the Scripture, in the Bible, there are many promises by God. And I have experienced, experienced those promises myself. And I, I've seen that God is reliable. He, I can trust Him. He not only fulfills His promises in history, but also to myself. So if those promises that I found in the Old Testament, in the book of Psalms, in Proverbs, in the prophecies of Daniel, Jeremiah, and also in the New Testament, if those promises and, and prophecies I trust because I see that they are fulfilled, I, that leads me to believe that the book of Genesis also is reliable and the book of Exodus and also the book of Revelation that speaks about present and the, the future. For me, those three, prophecy, history, and God's promises, are the most important. I would add also a fourth one, which is the life of Jesus. The life of Jesus is an example, is nobody has been like him. And the things that he said and the way he lived tells me of a God that is reliable and whom I can trust. Well, God has his own ways of um, operation in nature, of, of which we know almost nothing. We are finite, we are limited, and uh, what we can do is study rocks, for example, or living organisms, and try to infer the ways God operated in the past and in the present. As a scientist, I find the, um, the study of nature, and especially the rocks and fossils, um, exciting because I can study the creatures that God made, and now they are fossilized, they are petrified because they... A, um, a process in the past um, caused them to die and 
and become fossils. And I see design. I see a purpose. I see design. I see power in God's way of operation. Also, I see a complexity. When I study nature, rocks, for example, I see that uh, there is a dimension in nature that goes far beyond what I can understand based on my limited knowledge and based of, on what I can see today um, occurring in modern environments. Um, over and over again, I see that studying the rocks, that um, things must have been different sometime in the past that made possible to, for these rocks with the fossils they contain to, to occur. And that speaks of something be, more powerful and beyond my understanding that God had to intervene in a way that I will probably only understand just a little. But that is enough to keep me excited and to keep me looking for better answers, better knowledge, and better understanding of nature, rocks, and God himself. As a researcher, I do field work and, and uh, in investigations in geology and paleontology. And uh, I often work with um, researchers who believe the Bible and others who do not. And some are atheists, do not believe in God, the existence of God. Um, I work fine with um, anybody. Some mm, scientists who are not believers do not want to work with uh, Christian scientists, but others are just fine. They have no problem. And I don't have any problem with them either. Um, I try to live my faith just as I do in any other um, setting, any other situation. And um, I do research as any other scientist. I use the same methods in the field and in the lab, the same techniques for observation, for measurement, for sampling, um, I use the same criteria. I, um, I studied similar um, settings, rocks, fossils, as other scientists. Um, and um, they see that I'm a normal scientist, that I can have this, uh, simil similar conversations and questions. So they realize that... Um, they can trust what I do because I use the same methods. At the same time, I ask questions that sometimes they do not occur to them. Questions that derive from my biblical framework and worldview related to time, processes, and, and so on. So that's, that often is enriching for both of us for um, both them and I, because I, I tend to think both as a, um, um, as a um, regular scientist within a uh, long time evolutionary uh, um, worldview, but also as a, uh, a person who believes in the Bible and brings in a different worldview. So some scientists believe that that is enriching and gives gives the team um, more possibilities to think about and consider um, answers that otherwise they would not occur. So in that sense, some of my colleagues find very positive to work with me and other Christian scientists. And I find it very enriching to work with them as well. And um, I know a, a second, a second um, effect is derived from mm, the way we Christians live our life. Because the gospel 
and the life of Jesus makes a difference in us. Other scientists, students realize that when we, especially when we go out to the field, some things we do differently. They are remarkable and they realize that they can trust us, they can, uh, they can work with us because somehow we tend to reflect what we learn from Jesus. And that's, that's always good. You cannot do anything wrong if you do what Jesus did. And I think that's very important when we do research in geology and paleontology and other fields too. Are dinosaurs real? Of course, we have found lots of skeletons, fossils of skeletons. We also have found lots of footprints. I myself, I'm doing research on dinosaur footprints. And also we have found um, dinosaur eggs. How do we know that they are from dinosaurs and not other animals? Well, when we compare the skeletons and the footprints, with other fossils that we know, like other reptiles or um, mammals, we don't find that they are of the same type, of the same texture, of the same category. So scientists had to, had to think of, of another category of animals that would fit with those skeletons and those footprints, and we call them dinosaurs. Well, if God didn't, then there are only two possibilities that I can think of. Either dinosaurs evolved from other animals that lived before, or they were the result of some kind of um, experiment. But who was experiment, experimenting with uh, animals to create dinosaurs? So probably God created dinosaurs on the sixth day of creation as he created other animals on that day, terrestrial animals. Perhaps God created dinosaurs. And um, some of the species changed over time as other species of land animals also changed because of the fall of sin. And some dinosaurs became carnivores. That's one possibility. Some people believe that um, dinosaurs are a result of um, experiments, genetic or hybridization experiments done by antediluvians. How do we know that? We, we don't have proof, scientific proof of that. We don't have scientific evidence of that. And um, I suggest that not to make that a, um, a dogma or an article of faith or a scientific issue because of an idea that we can't really test or prove using science. We do not know whether dinosaurs entered the ark or not. The Bible does not say either they entered or not. And uh, science does not reveal that either. If uh, they did, they should have survived at least from, for some time after the, the flood. And we do not have evidence of that either. And if they did not enter the ark, then they perished and uh, went extinct because of the flood. But we do not have clear evidence from science and definitely not from the Bible either. So it's a subject that deserves more study and, in, and research. Uh, paleontologists know that um, 
to form a fossil, three conditions are needed. One is the possession of hard parts, like shells, bones, bones, teeth, wood, for example. Um, although soft parts have been found, also uh, fossilized, they are extremely rare. Second condition is rapid burial. Um, a, a, a layer of sediment, like we see here, burying skeletons, uh, shells, wood, etc., and, uh, and preserving them, rapid burial. And the third condition is that the, the, the burial, the sediment, has to have the right geochemical conditions. Otherwise, the, the organic material will decompose within the sediment. If those three conditions are met, fossilization can occur very rapidly. There are some studies that show that fossilization can occur in a matter of a few minutes to a few months or a few years. There are examples of fossil fish, for example, that are thought to have fossilized within minutes after death. That's very remarkable. It's very rapid. Why? Because decomposition of organic material occurs fast, extremely fast. And if rapid burial in, in sediment appropriate for fossilization does not occur, the organism is going to be destroyed or eaten up, scavenged. So rap fossilization is not a, a slow process. It can be very, very, very rapid. Fossils are not necessarily evidence of evolution. They are evidence of life in the past. Some of these life forms were different compared to what we see in modern environments, in modern times. Others are similar, very similar. And some are even almost identical, the same kind. But they do not necessarily um, affirm or support evolution. In fact, the fossil record is a big problem for evolution. Why? Well, according to the Darwinian theory of evolution, we, sh we would expect to see gradual changes in animals and plants uh, along millions of years, and those changes, gradual intermediate changes, be recorded in the rocks. Well, that's not exactly what we find in the sedimentary rock the different kinds of fossils appear abruptly and suddenly in, in different layers, but not gradually. And that's opposite to what we expect in the evolution theory. So fossils are proof that different forms and similar forms to the present lived in the past, but not necessarily that they evolved. 